Hello, it's Jay here again and welcome to another video. So, in this lesson, we are going to continue on with the player one movement, but I just wanted to go over a couple of things first. If I come to the resources folder, I was having a little problem with the animations I was using, so I have gone back and I'm using the animations that actually came with this model now. Um, I've added both into the animation component as well as assigning them here in the inspector. And this is very important, otherwise the script will not work correctly. Now, I've removed the rigid body component for now. This is just for testing. I will be adding it back, but it just makes things a little bit easier because while that was in place, it was just making things a little bit difficult because I would have needed to go through and tweak a lot of things which would have delayed this video. So I've removed it for now, but I'll be coming back and adding that back in later. And that is simply so we can get on with the creation of the script, which I know you're all eager to do. And I've got a controller attached to my PC at the moment. I've just started the game up. So, once we actually come to the choose character, what I found was, when an animation was playing, my character was not in the correct position, not facing right. So what I've had to do is change the rotation. And as you can see, the robot's there and he's looking the right way. So I've had to change the rotation from 90 to 180 degrees in the scripts of choose character, player one, manager and opponent manager. You may have to do the same, but it will depend on what models you are using. So with that say, let's come to the script itself. And we'll make this full screen and I think we'll begin with creating some of the variables. There's only three in this lesson, so we can get these in place quite quickly. Private transform with the capital T. And we'll give this a naming convention of underscore player one transform. Let's close that line off into the comments. We'll say defines naming convention for the player's transform. And in fact, I think I'll put it here. I'm going to put a public of type float. And we'll give this a naming convention of underscore player walk speed. And I'm just going to make that equal to 1 to start with. and But I'm making it a float because we will need to actually adjust that number. We may have to make small adjustments just to get it perfect. But again, that will come later. Let's just get something working. So we'll use a straight up value of 1. And we'll put into the comments def defines player's walk speed and we also need one other variable and in fact I think I put it here with the collision flag private of type vector 3 player 1 move direction and we'll make that equal to a vector 3 dot 0 and we'll close that line off into the comments. So we'll say it defines the player's move direction and set to zero. Because we want the move direction to be zero on startup 
obviously awaiting our gamepad inputs. With that said, let's come to the void start now. And we need to get the player one transform. And we'll just say that's equal to transform. We'll close the line off. And please note it's a lowercase t for transform this time. And we'll just say cache players transform. And I'm also going to set the player one move direction to be equal to vector 3.0. Close the line off. Now, I know we've done that here. And I will change this later. But again, I just want to make sure it's zeroed out. So I'm going to put it in the void start for now. But we will alter things as the game becomes more complex. We can come back and we can clean up little pieces of code like th this. But let's just get into place for now. Set move direction to zero on start up. And with that in place, let's come to the void update. And what we want is if open and close brackets inside the brackets import dot we want get access open and close brackets inside the brackets little speech marks and we want horizontal we'll come in between these closed brackets now we'll use the less than sign we'll say zero f and yes, I'm going to make it a float because again, I may change this just to give a tiny bit of dead zone so the controls are, are not too twitchy. We want our controls to be responsive, but we don't want twitchy controls. So this will be changed again at a later date, but it's at zero for now, just while we get things up and running. So we'll say in the comments, if little speech marks and I'll put the horizontal so if horizontal input is less than zero and we need to change states so we'll say underscore player one states and we're going to make that equal to the player one movement dot player one states dot player walk left we'll close the line off so how this works is here's our state play one states defined by this naming convention we've got the name of the script player one states you can see defined here and here and player walk left is the void block so Let's break this up for commenting. I'll enter here and into the comments. So we'll say if horizontal input is less than zero, we'll say then set player one states to equal. Let's come to the next line and I'll just copy that in. Player walk left state. And we'll copy that entire block. We'll paste it in below. And I'm sure you've guessed we're going to change that to a greater than sign. And we're going to change this to greater than zero. So let's save that off. So there's our first imports in code set up already although they won't do anything other than switch to the blocks so let's come to the player walk left to begin with and our fact i'll get this in place first underscore collision flags will say is going to be equal to the player controller dot move 
open and close brackets inside the brackets we're going to say play at one move direction times time dot delta time we'll come to the end we'll close that line off let's break this up for commenting so i'll enter there and i'll enter there i think And this is part of the code that will allow us to actually move the controller. Although we will still need other code. So collision flags equals. Let's come to the next line. The player controller with move. And I'll put command. by the move direction and let's copy that and we'll paste that into the player walk right no need to change anything at this point so we'll co come back here let's copy and paste one of these blocks out of the void update and we'll paste it in at the bottom of each of the functions. And we'll change it to if input dot get access horizontal double equals zero. I'll remove the F. The comments will say is equal to zero now. What we'll do is we'll switch back to the player one idle state. And I'll just get this in place for now. We'll probably have to um, actually have a earlier state of player reset. If any of you have uh, seen my other videos, you know how that works. But... Again, let's just get this in place for now so we can actually begin testing the script. So, with that in place, we'll move on to the actual player movement, I think, in the next video. We've got all the basic code in place, and in the next video, we'll actually get the movement actually in code and we can actually be able to start moving the character around the fight scene so as always i hope you enjoyed this lesson i hope to see you next time and until then as always bye for now